beautiful. Hi, I'm Tony, and this is the story of the build of this 31 foot 8 inch J. Benford designed cruising sailboat. From the lofting of the lines to her emerging from the boat shed to receive her keel, masts, and all the other paraphernalia that make up a cruising vessel. Join us on this adventure as we build to patch her and hopefully set off to test her out as a liverboard cruising vessel. Hi all. Well, as you may well be aware, we're working on the keel of the boat. And one of the beauties of the Benford Dory is, is that you can build the boat and fit the keel towards the end of the build. And uh, the keel basically is formed out of two sections. It's, it's the keel timber that I'm lent on here. The ballast keel that you can see over there, just about next to it. And the timber fits on top of the ballast keel and the whole thing is bolted up underneath the boat and the thinking as it stands is that, that the boat and the keel sections will be transported separately up to a boat yard somewhere and then they use the facilities there to uh, to get the boat up in the air and jack the keel up underneath it and bolt them together but the timber still needs a bit of finishing off you may remember as it was it was a flat piece that fitted completely on top of the of the ballast keel but there are two sections that hang down. I'll go around the other side. Yeah, this is the part that, that fits in front of this or just fares the, the ballast keel into the timber. And there's another section that hangs down after the ballast keel that, that goes back as far as the rudder, the lower rudder shoe. So I've got the front one of those on in position now. And in many ways, the front one's the hardest of them, even though it's much smaller. Because it's, it's shaped, you know, it's angled, it's shaped to, to blend into that leading edge. That is now in position and started glassing up. I've got a good heavy biaxial tape down the front there. Then I'll be laying it flat and biaxial cloth on either side. The whole thing will be completely encapsulated in, in glass and epoxy. And, and a fairly heavy one at that. Um, so that's coming on well. Still got that aft ray section to go, but that, I do believe that'll go quickly. As it's big, but it's a big chunk of wood. It's not particularly complex. So it's coming on well. I also put a few coats of zinc-rich epoxy on the on the ballast keel, on the top, and on the bolts just to seal those and protect them.
these things. That's what you're doing, Gary. So, we poured acetone into this tank to try and get rid of all the crud that's on the inside of it. You can see. It's better. Yeah, it's a bit better than it was last time. Last time it came out completely black again. But, yeah. The petrol had gone off in there, hadn't it? And, and uh, lined the tank out with a sort of varnish that settles yeah. out of the petrol somehow. And then it keeps bunging up the carburetor, the muck in the tank. So, trying to get it clean, eh? Yep. So the right spot is there.
It's looking quite good, isn't it? It's not perfect, but it's quite good. Well, a lot of it's perfect, it's just that very front end. It's going to take a bit of filler there just to line that up perfectly. A little fairing filler. But it's just looking good. Alrighty. Let's see if we can lift that then, shall we? A bit of a low point here, which is yeah, a bit of a shame, but there we go. Life, perhaps.
So we've got the engine wiring diagram and the instrument panel wiring diagram. Lost a load of notes that I made yesterday evening when I was tracing through it all. And the multimeter. And it's time to get in there, trace it through and get things working. So that one is the minus, that one's the minus, that's going on there, that one's the plus, that's going on there. Still fit. It does. Yeah, and spent a fair bit of time this week uh, testing through the wiring of the engine and the panel, tracing it through. Uh, I showed you there the wiring diagrams and the multimeter, but in practice, and in fact, I mainly used a test lamp, which is a, a much more suitable tool. Just see it laying there. My trusty, my trusty test lamp. Um, much more suitable tool, in, in truth, for testing 12 volt circuits. Uh, so I worked through that, found one or two errors, for example one of the wires was going to the wrong pin of the starter relay, um, but one of the main things of these engines is that the uh, earth, the main earth and the alternator earth is, is isolated from the engine, so, so the alternator doesn't earth to the engine block as a separate earth, and most of the engine wiring, most, passes through that earth as well and um, there's a bit of a history there there are there are four versions of the this is MD Volvo Penta MD 2010 I've got there are four versions of it and the first version had a double solenoid so that both the positive and the negative were uh, were isolated to the starter motor were worked through a solenoid and then they saw the senselessness of their ways insulated the sail drive from the engine and just used a standard positive solenoid but the alternator as I say still has an isolated earth and most of the engine wiring most of the engine wiring passes through that isolated earth of the alternator so that's a very important connection um, and if that isn't up to scratch it causes all sorts of problems and that was another thing that I found so I've ordered um, some AWG-8 wire, which I'll run a new earth from the alternator uh, with that, that's still to come. But other than that, as I say, one or two little errors I found, I need to put a new feed to the glow plugs. But other than that, everything seems to be working. Now when I turn the panel on, the warning buzzer beeps. Actually, when I wired it up with the little battery that I had, I. I that the starter was engaging and, and turning the engine a little bit so things are all looking very good and I'm hopeful uh, I'm s connecting up the batteries well the battery I've just got a very small battery in the, in the service battery area but, but the starter battery as you saw is being connected up and we're getting close to being in the position to be able to start it because this is this is one of the things I'm really working on. I'm, I'm working on getting that keel finished and starting the engine. It's something I want to do soon, as soon as possible, actually. And then once I've got those done, it'll be masts and we're looking at moving up to the boatyard. And that, guys, is it for this week. Thank you for watching. Give us your thumbs up. Hit the subscribe button, please. It helps us get out to a, a wider audience. See you next time. Bye.